what is sort of the reason for uh, the span of time between, say, uh, Claude Opus 3.0 oh, and 3.5? What is it, what takes that time if you can speak to? Yeah, so there's there's different there's different uh, processes. Um, uh, there's pre-training, which is you know just kind of the normal language model training, and that takes a very long time. Um, that uses you know these days you know tens you know tens of thousands, sometimes many tens of thousands of uh, GPUs or TPUs or Trainium or you know what we use different platforms, but you know accelerator chips. Um, often often training for months. Uh, there's then a kind of post-training phase where we do reinforcement learning from human feedback, as well as other kinds of reinforcement learning that, that phase is getting, uh, larger and larger now. And, you know, you know, often that's less of an exact science. It often takes effort to get it right. Um, models are then tested with some of our early partners to see how good they are. And they're then tested both internally and externally for their safety, particularly for catastrophic and autonomy risks. Uh, so uh, we do internal testing according to our responsible scaling policy, which I you know, could talk more about that in detail. And then we have an agreement with the US and the UK AI Safety Institute, as well as other third-party testers in specific domains to test the models for what are called CBRN risks, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear, which are, you know, we don't think that models pose these risks seriously yet, but but every new model we want to evaluate to see if we're starting to get close to some of these 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 more dangerous um uh these more dangerous capabilities. So those are the phases. And then uh, you know, then then it just takes some time to get the model working in terms of inference and launching it in the API. So there's just just a lot of steps to uh to actually to actually making a model work. And of course, you know, we're always trying to make the processes as streamlined as possible, right? We want our safety testing to be rigorous, but we want it to be rigorous and to be, you know, to be automatic, to, to happen as fast as it can without compromising on rigor. Same with our pre-training process and our post-training process. So, you know, it's just like building anything else. It's just like building airplanes. You want to make them, you know, you want to make them safe, but you want to make the process streamlined. And I think the creative tension between those is, is you know, is an important thing in making the models work. Yeah, uh, rumor on the street. I forget who was saying that uh, Anthropic has really good tooling. So I uh, probably a lot of the challenge here is on the software engineering side is to build the tooling to to have a like a efficient, low friction interaction with the infrastructure. You would be surprised how much of the challenges of uh, you know building these models comes down to you know, software engineering, performance engineering, you know, you, you, you know, from the outside, you might think, oh man, we had this Eureka breakthrough, right? You know, this movie with the science, we discovered it, we figured it out. But, but, but I think, I think all things, even, 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 you know, incredible discoveries, like they, 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 they almost always come down to the details um, and, and often super, super boring details. I can't speak to whether we have better tooling than, than other companies. I mean, you know, I haven't been at those other companies, at least, at least not recently. Um, but it's certainly something we give a lot of attention to. I don't know if you can say, but from three, from Claude three to Claude three, five, is there any extra pre-training going on? Or is it mostly focused on the post-training? There's been leaps in performance. Yeah, I think I think at any given stage, we're focused on improving everything at once. Okay. Um, just just naturally, like there are different teams. Each team makes progress in a particular area in 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 making a particular you know their particular segment of the relay race better. And it's just natural that when we make a new model, we put we put all of these things in at once. So uh, the data you have, like the preference data you get from R L H F, is that applicable? To, is there ways to apply it to newer models as it get trained up? Yeah, preference data from old models sometimes gets used for new models, although of course uh it it performs somewhat better when it's you know trained on it's trained on the new models. Note that we have this you know constitutional AI method such that we don't only use preference data, we kind of there's also a post-training process where we train the model against itself. And there's, you know, new types of post-training the model against itself that are used every day. So it's not just RLHF, it's a bunch of other methods as well. Um, post-training, I think, you know, is becoming more and more sophisticated.